Good morning on this Tuesday, uh, July 28th, 2020. The Lord bless us and be with us this day. Morning Devotion, page 152 in the Christian Worship Hymnal, page 152 if you have it. God our Father, each day is a gift of your grace. Your mercies are new every morning. Guide our steps by the light of your word. Shield us from harm and keep us from evil. Better than life is your love. Put joy in our hearts and praise on our lips. Alleluia. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, you have brought us safely to this new day. Defend us with your mighty power and grant that this day we neither fall into sin nor run into any kind of danger. And in all we do, direct us to what is right in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Scripture portion of Scripture today. Um, we look to the book of Acts, Acts chapter 23, Acts 23, beginning in verse 12. Uh, this is a section where the Apostle Paul um, is under attack, um, is being persecuted, and has to flee um, under guard to protect him as the Jews are, are seeking to ambush him and plot against him. When it was the day, the Jews made a plot and bound themselves by an oath neither to eat nor drink till they had killed Paul. There were more than forty who made this conspiracy. They went to the chief priests and elders and said, We have strictly bound ourselves by an oath to taste no food till we have killed Paul. Now therefore you along with the council give notice to the tribune to bring him down to you, as though you were going to determine his case more exactly, and we are ready to kill him before he comes near. Now the son of Paul's sister heard of their ambush. So he went and entered the barracks and told Paul. Paul called one of the centurions and said, Take this young man to the tribune, for he has something to tell him. So he took him and brought him to the tribune and said, Paul, the prisoner, called me and asked me to bring this young man to you, as he has something to say to you. The tribune took him by the hand and going aside asked him privately, What is it that you have to tell me? And he said, the Jews have agreed to ask you to bring Paul down to the council tomorrow, as though they were going to inquire somewhat more closely about him. But do not be persuaded by them, for more than forty of their men are lying in ambush for him, who have bound themselves by an oath neither to eat nor drink till they have killed him. And now they are ready waiting for you to consent your consent. So the tribune dismissed the young man, charging him, Tell no one that you have informed me of these things. Then he called two of the centurions and said, Get ready two hundred soldiers with seventy horsemen and two hundred spearmen to go as far as Caesarea at the third hour of the night. Also provide mounts for Paul to ride and bring him safely to Felix, the governor. This is the word of our Lord. So you think, think of that uh, conspiracy against the Apostle Paul um, by the Jewish people who opposed him um, to ambush him and kill him. The, the anger, the hatred toward him. And we think of the many of the psalms, right? When the, the psalmists proclaim and cry out to God, how the evil people conspire against them and plot against them. Against them. A very real case here where, where he's rushed out of there with, with 200 soldiers, 70 horsemen, and 200 spearmen. You know, that's quite a few people um, taking him out in the third watch of the night, um, escaping down. But really what stuck out for me as I read this today, um, where it was where it said, Paul the prisoner called me. I just think of how he was known, right? Paul the prisoner. And, and he was a prisoner more than just this time. Um, he'd been a prisoner many times and would be a prisoner still. And Paul writes about that himself, about being a prisoner, um, not, to, not to the laws of, of men, uh, not to the, the slavery to sin, um, but a prisoner um, in chains for Christ, all right, that he was in chains for Christ. He, he, he was there um, because the people persecuted him and, and they were against him. And, and now he, he belongs to God um, and is a, is a slave to righteousness, um, is, is, is a prisoner to God in that work. Uh, and you think of that, right? The, we're prisoners... Um, being set free from, from being bound in our in our sins, right? In in our in our sins and then slaves to our sin and sinfulness. 
and, and being being set free, um, set free um, from the demands of the law. That that those were Jewish people were against Paul for what he proclaimed, um, the freedom from that law, and to earn earn salvation, uh, for Christ has earned it in our place, and and, and free from the, the the guilt of sin and its ultimate punishment and, and of, of condemnation, um, because Jesus Christ suffered that for us, kept the law for us, suffered that that death for us, to give us that that comfort that freedom, um, that we're now uh, prisoners. Um, Prisoners, you know, in Christ, I guess we could say, right? Prisoners in Christ, um, belonging to Him, and, and that's that's freedom. Then, though, that's freedom from from the evils um, that want to destroy us. And so we think of the the comfort that's in that for us, uh, belonging to Christ, uh, and as as His His prisoners in a sense. Uh, but but really, uh, the the comfort we have in the face of those who who persecute us, and that persecution still real. real. Uh, the, the devil still attacks and wants to destroy. Uh, God, God be with us and bless us. Uh, we'll continue with the reading on what is what justifying faith is from the Apology to the Augsburg Confession. So we're thinking of what is justifying faith. Faith means not only a knowledge of the history, but the kind of faith that believes in the promise. Paul plainly testifies about this when he says in Romans 4.16, that is why it depends on faith, in order that the promise may rest on grace and be guaranteed. He judges that the promise cannot be received unless it comes through faith. Therefore, he puts them together as things that belong to one another. He connects the promise and faith. It will be easy to decide what faith is if we consider the creed, where this article certainly stands, the forgiveness of sins. It is not enough to believe that Christ was born, suffered, was raised again, unless we add also this article, which is the purpose of the history, the forgiveness of sins. To this article, the rest must be referred, namely that for Christ's sake, and not because of our merits, forgiveness of sins is given to us. For what we need was there that Christ was given for our sins, if our merits can make satisfaction for our sins. Whenever we speak of justifying faith, we must keep in mind that these three objects belong together, the promise, grace, and Christ's merits as the price and atonement. The promise is received through faith. Grace excludes our merits and means that the benefit is offered only through mercy. Christ's merits are the price because there must be a certain atonement for our sins. Scripture frequently cries out for mercy. The Holy Fathers often say that we are saved by mercy. Therefore, whenever mercy is mentioned, we must keep in mind that faith which receives the promise of mercy is required there. Again, whenever we speak about faith, we want an object of faith to be understood, namely the promised mercy. For faith justifies and saves, not because it is a worthy work in itself, but only because it receives the promised mercy. Join in Luther's morning prayer. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have great me, graciously kept me this night from all harm and danger, keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. Into your hands I commend my body and soul in all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the wicked foe may have no power over me. Amen. May the love of the Lord Jesus draw us to himself. May the power of the Lord Jesus make us strong to do his will. May the peace of the Lord Jesus fill our lives. Amen.